All right, for, for today, we're going to be looking at what we called similar polygons, similar figures. Now, polygons, they have, they, they have to respect two things in order for them to be similar. Similar, what it means is the same shape, but they can be different sizes. There are two criteria. So let me write one and two. There's two criteria that must be respected. So two criteria that must happen in order for two polygons to be similar. First thing we have to do is same angles. So let me write down same angles. So the angles on the figures, they must be the same thing, okay? Another thing that has to happen, I'm gonna say sides are proportional. So the angles must be the same, so same angles, and the sides are proportional. I'm going to talk about proportional in a minute. What, what does that mean? But uh, for right now, let me just say two things must happen. So let's take a look at question number one. I notice the angles. I'm looking at the corners right now. I notice the two angles on the top are equal and are the same two angles on the other figure. So, so far, those angles are fine. I notice the two angles at the bottom are equal, and the same thing happens with the two angles on the other figure. All right, so I was comparing my corners. I was comparing my angles. The angles are the same. So the side, the angles are equal. So that's the first criteria. That's fine. The other part, sides are proportional. Let me take a look. The numbers that I see from my first polygon are the numbers 20, 18.3, and 35. Let me write those numbers. I'm going to write fractions but I'm gonna keep those on the same side of my fraction. In this case, on the top, 20. Like I said, I'm gonna write fractions, 18.3 and 35. Notice that I only use 18.3 once. That's why I only wrote, it, wrote three fractions instead of four. Now, corresponding. I know you guys talk about parallel lines before. Parallel lines, and I know you talk about alternate interior, alternate exterior corresponding. Now, corresponding is basically that this side, number 20, is corresponding to 22 because it's the same side once I grew or, or made my polygon smaller. Once one polygon changed size, 20 is corresponding to 22. Remember, it meant on the same side. So 20 goes with 22. 18.3 goes with 24.3. Again, I'm using the word corresponding because we already learned that. And 35 goes with 42. Now, proportional, what it means is that my fractions, if I simplify my fractions, they should all simplify to the same thing. Okay, let me say that again. In order for my size to be proportional, if I simplify my fractions, they should all simplify to the same thing. All of them. All right, so there's three fractions. I remember how to simplify. I'm looking at my first fraction, 20 over 22. I'm gonna divide each of these by two. So that fraction simplifies to 10 over 11, right? I cannot simplify anymore. I don't wanna deal with my fraction in the center to begin, in, in, to begin with. I'll come back to that one. Let me take a look at my last fraction, 35 over 42. I felt I can divide each by seven. 35 divided by seven is five, 42 divided by seven is six, nothing else I can do. I'm gonna take a look at my first and last fraction for right now. Earlier I said, in order for my size to be proportional, all of my fractions will simplify to the same thing. I notice that two fractions do not. So I don't really care about the one in the middle anymore. I didn't meet the two criteria. Remember the two criteria I had to meet were same angles, size had to be proportional. I was not able to meet the second criteria. Therefore, I'm gonna say these are not similar. Again, in order for two figures to be similar, 
They must have the same angles and the sides must be proportional. Notice that again, I didn't have to check the middle fraction because I already found two that are not proportional. All right, let's take a look at question number two. I look at the angles. Both figures seem to be marked the same, same way. All right, angles are good. Now, when it comes to sides, I see 12, 18.6, and 24. 12, 18.6, and 24. Okay, so 12 is corresponding to 20. 18.6 is corresponding to 31 and 24 is corresponding to 40. Right, let me simplify it. My first fraction, let me divide each by four. So that gives me three over five. Here, let me divide each by eight on the last one. I don't wanna deal with my decimals for right now at least. 24 and over 40, let me divide each by eight and that gives me three over five. Okay, so I must simplify the middle one. Now there's one more thing, one more thing we're gonna be able to do. If simplifying is not that nice, right? 18.6 and 31, I must probably be able to divide them by a decimal, but if, they're, if simplifying is not that easy, what I'm going to do is, let me compare if two fractions so I'm just going to take a look at these. If two fractions are proportional, because if these two are proportional, I'm pretty sure all of them are, right? Because the last one, it, it's good so far. So what I'm going to do when, when simplifying is not that simple, I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply 12 times 31. Use a calculator if you need to. I'm going to go 12 times 31. According to my calculator, I get 372. Then also let me multiply 18.6 times 20. According to my calculator, it's 372. I did get the same number. I did get the same number when I cross multiplied. So I'm gonna say this one simplifies to three over five as well. Simplifies to the same thing. Notice my trick that I did. I cross multiplied and I must get the same number. All right, so the angles were the same. All the sides are proportional. Guess what? These are similar. Now, if you're wondering decimal wise, what was I really supposed to divide it by? 6.2, 18.6 divided by 6.2 is three. 31 divided by 6.2 is five. So when we have, when dividing, when simplifying is not that nice, we cross multiplied. All right, let's take a look at question number three. Let me take a look at my angles first. This is 80, this is 70. Huh, angles are not equal. These angles are not the same thing. Then I don't really care if my sides are proportional. I'm just going to say not similar. Angles have to be equal. Sides must be proportional. I don't need to check for the sides. The angles are not equal already. So that's it. Not similar. Now, question number four. I see the angles, but they're not quite corresponding. 100 degrees. It's corresponding to this side, 100 degrees. Before you guys talk about parallelograms, when you guys talk about quadrilaterals, right, figures that have four sides, we talk about parallelograms. Parallelograms, we learned that two adjacent angles must be supplementary. Now, in, Eng in English, what that means is that two angles that are next to each other, right, they're connected by a side, they must add up to 180. Right, so I see. 80 and 100, they're connected by a side. They do add up to 180, okay, so angles are good. Now, when it comes to sides, I see 30 and 20. Thirty 
is corresponding to 12, so you guys can see, and 20 is corresponding to 8. So 20 goes with 8, 30 goes with 12. All right, angles were equal. Angles were fine. I'm going to see if the sides are proportional. I can simplify my fractions, but now I just learned a new trick. I can just cross multiply. Let me cross multiply instead. 30 times 8, that's 240. 20 times 12, that's 240. Ah, they do simplify to the same thing. All right, angles are equal, sides are proportional. Therefore, this is similar. Nice. Now here for number five, the polygons in each pair are similar. Oh, very important thing. The polygons in each pair are similar. So that means that angles are equal, sides are proportional. Find a scale factored of the smaller figured to the larger figured. Oh, very important word here, too. The smaller figured to the larger figured. Order matters. Now, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be comparing a side from the small figure to a side of the big figure. But make sure they have their corresponding sides. I'm going to compare the 16 of the small figure with the 24. The way we, we write scale factors, there's a couple of ways. We can write 16 to 24. That's one way. Notice I wrote the smaller figure, the smaller number first, because it said smaller figure to the larger figure. So make sure you write the small number first. So again, we can write that as 16 to 24. That's one way of writing it. Some other people write 16 over 24. That's another way of writing it. But the way we are going to write it will be 16 colon 24. The way we read that is 16 to 24. Okay. So we're going to do this third version, 16 to 24. However, make sure you simplify your numbers. If there is a number that you can divide 16 and 24, if there's a number you can divide them by, simplify them. My case, let me divide each number by 8. So my answer will be 2, 2, 3. Again, keep in mind, a small number comes first. So it's 2 to 3. All right, not too hard. Let's take a look at number 6. I'm going to be comparing this 6 with this 30. So I'm just going to write 6 to 30. Again, remember to write the small number first. Now, 6 to 30, I, I believe we can simplify that. Let me just say, let me divide each number by 6. So my answer will be 1, 2, 5. Keep in mind, we're typing the colon. Everything all together, no spaces. All right, let's take a look at number 7. I'm going to compare this 14 which is corresponding to 21. So I'm going to write 14 to 21. Notice I'm only writing one number per figure. And don't forget to simplify. Let me divide each of these by 7. So my answer will be 2 to 3. 2 to 3. Lastly, let's take a look at number eight for this part. My numbers, my, I'm going to be comparing is 20 and five. But remember, I have to go smaller figure to the larger figure. I have to write the small number first. So let me write five to 20. Don't forget to simplify. Let me simplify each by five. Let me divide each by five. So it's one, two, four. All together, right? No spaces, no nothing. So that's how we write a scale factor. Smaller figure to the larger figure. We only had to compare one number per figure, right? Per polygon. Now let's take a look at a quick review on algebra. 
This type of questions will be just on proportions. It says solve each proportion. When we use the word solve, solve, there, there must be a letter somewhere in there. We want to know what's the value of the letter that will make that statement true. So I'm, I'm trying to solve for what's the value of the letter. So here, when I finish x equals something, yeah, that's basically what I'm finding. What's the value that makes the two, the, the two fractions be equal? Okay. The way I'm going to do this, let me cross multiply. Let me write all the steps for this for the beginning. I'm going to go 2 times the quantity x plus 2. And then I'm going to go 8 times 9. So 2 times the quantity x plus 2 is equal to 8 plus 9. All right, distribute the 2. So that gives me 2x plus 4. It's equal to 72. One thing I want to emphasize at this point, when I cross multiplied, when I went 2 times x plus 2, notice the number by itself, the 2, I went 2 times x and 2 times 2. The number by itself multiplied to both on the other fraction. And I kept a plus because there was a plus in the middle. All right, we learned in Algebra 1 how to solve for a letter. And then we said, let's, keep the, let's get the letter by itself. Remember, in Algebra 1, we talk about opposite operations, like pluses and minuses undo each other. That, that's opposite operation. Times and divide, they undo each other. So my goal here, let me separate my size through the equal sign. My goal is to find the value of x. So I want to cancel. I want to get rid of this plus 4. Back in Algebra, our teacher said, Let's do, instead of plus, let's do minus, opposite operation on both sides, so that plus four is going to cancel out. I'm literally going to cancel out, but I'm going to write on the other side, minus four. I'm going to cancel out on one side, but I'm going to write it on the other side with the opposite operation. Instead of plus, I wrote minus. So that gives me that 2x is equal to 68, right? 72 minus four, that's 68. I want to cancel that too, the one in front of the x. I want to cancel it out. I know 2x is basically 2 times x. The opposite of times is divide. So let me divide on the other side by 2. So that's going to give me that x is equal to 34. Pretty sure on my second fraction, if I write 34 plus 2 over 9, it is going to simplify to 8 over 2. I'm pretty sure we can do that. Right? They are proportional. Now, when you type in your homework, you don't have to type in x equals. When I said solve, I knew you were finding the value of the variable, the value of the letter. So make sure you only type in the number. So your answer will be just 34. Let's take a look at number 10. Let me cross multiply this way. The number by itself, the 6, I'm going to go 6 times k minus and 6 times 9. Right, The number by itself, I have to multiply to both. 6 times k and 6 times 9 equals 9 times 10 is 9. Let me separate them through the equal sign. My minus 54, I'm going to move it to the other side as a plus 54. So that gives me that 6K is equal to 144, right? 90 plus 54, that's 144. I do want to cancel that 6, right? I divide both sides by 6. So I get that K is equal to 26. Again, you don't have to type in K equals just 26. We change to blue so we don't get confused with number nine. For number 11, let me cross multiply here. So that gives me that 4R minus 32 equals, remember four times R, four times eight. That's where I got 4R minus 32 equals 72. The minus 32, let me move it over as a plus 32. So I have that 4R is equal to 104. 
Let me divide both sides by four, right? I cancel the four, but I write it on the other side as a divide. So I get that R is equal to 26. Nice. Number 12, let me cross multiply this way. The nine, the number by itself, is gonna multiply on the other side times the letter and the other nine. So it's gonna give me 9a minus 81 equals three times three is nine. I wanna have the 9a by itself. So this minus 81, let me move it to the other side as a plus 81. So I have the 9a is equal to 90. I'll cancel this 9, but I'm going to write it as a division. So I get that a is equal to 10, right? 90 divided by 9. Now we're going to use this idea for proportions. The one idea that we just used right now was a quick review of an algebra idea. We're going to use this to be able to solve for questions 13 through 16. Now, here it says solve for x. The polygons in each pair are similar. Because I, the polygons are similar, I can do proportional parts. Okay, so here, I have to use the x minus 2 for sure. I'm going to use two values. So x minus 2 goes with 24. So that's great. I don't want to deal with decimals. We could. We could use with decimals, but I don't want to deal with decimals. I have to choose two sides because I'm going to write two fractions. I have to choose two sides from each polygon. I'm going to use the 7, which is corresponding to the 28. So I'm just going to write x minus 2 and 7. Notice how x minus 2 and 7 came from the same figure. I know x minus 2 is corresponding to 24, and 7 is corresponding to 28. Now I can just cross multiply, solve for x, but there is one thing. If I can make my number smaller, I will. 7 over 28, I think we can just call that 1 over 4. You don't have to. You don't have to simplify it. You can cross multiply whenever, but I would rather simplify first so I deal with smaller numbers. All right, let me cross multiply this way. The four, the number by itself, remember I'm gonna go four times x, four times two. So that's gonna give me four x minus eight equals this other way, 24 times one is 24. All right, let me undo the minus eight. I'm gonna do it on this other side as a plus eight. So I get that 4x is equal to 32. To get rid of the 4, let me divide by 4. So I cancel out the 4. 32 divided by 4 is 8. Again, you don't have to type in x equals for your homework, just an 8. Looking at number 14, I'm going to choose the x plus 13, which is corresponding to 40. Don't want to deal with decimals. We could. It's okay to deal with decimals, but I don't really want to. So instead, I'm going to choose the 18, which is corresponding to the 30. Notice how in one figure, I circle my numbers, and the other figure, I underline with the corresponding parts. So I'm going to do 18 and then x plus 13. Notice those two come from the same figure. 18 is corresponding to 30. And the x plus 13 is corresponding to 40. One pretty cool thing. Fractions, I can always simplify. Right here, 18 over 30. I could probably divide each by 6. But now there's another trick I'm about to show you guys. Not only can you simplify up and down, like we, like we just noticed, I can also simplify sideways. That's a, another cool thing. 30 and 40, let me divide each by 10. So this is going to become 3 and 4. Nice. That's pretty cool. You can also simplify sideways. And that's what I just, I'm going to do. I can 
also simplify my first fraction, 18 over 3, as a 6 over 1, but I'm not going to simplify more. I said earlier, we can cross multiply whenever, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to cross multiply already. The 3, I'm going to go 3 times x and 3 times 13. So it's going to give me 3x plus 39 equals 18 times 4. Use a calculator if you need to. That's 72. All right, so I have 3x plus 39 equals 72. My plus 39, let me move it over as a minus 39. So that gives me that 3x is equal to 33. All right, 72 minus 39, that's 33. Let me divide by 3. So I'm going to get x equals 11. So my answer is 11. All right, two more questions. I'm going to, let's take a look at number 15. I'm going to use the x minus 4, which is corresponding to, with 9. And I'm going to use, uh, I could use the 4, which is corresponding with 12. We can also use 6 corresponding to 18. That's fine. We could also use that. Any values, as long as you know 2 from one polygon and the corresponding parts on the other. I'm going to use a 4 and an x minus 4. I know 4 is corresponding to 12, so I'm going to put the 12 with the 4. x minus 4 is corresponding with the 9. We can simplify, right? 4 over 12, we could do better. We could simplify. Sideways, 12 with 9, we could do better. We could divide there as well. But just to emphasize that I can cross multiply whenever, I'm not going to simplify. Like that we could have, but again, we can cross multiply whenever, so I'm not going to simplify. I'm going to go 12 times x and 12 times 4, so it's going to give me 12x minus 48 equals 4 times 9, that's 36. My minus 48, let me move it over as a plus 48, so I get that 12x is equal to 84. Let me divide by 12. X equals 7. If we simplify my numbers to begin with, we get the same answer. Because right? it is, it's not going to change the answer. It's just going to make the us deal with smaller numbers. I'm okay with dealing with big numbers. So I left it as a big number. Now here we're going to have 2x minus 17, which is corresponding to 9 and 8, which is corresponding to 24. So 2x minus 17 and 8 are both going to be on the top of my fractions. 2x minus 17 is corresponding with 9. 8 is corresponding with 24. 8 over 24, I will simplify this one as 1 over 3. So we don't have to. We could multiply it whenever, but I'm going to simplify this time. I want to simplify sometimes and sometimes not, just to emphasize that you can cross multiply whenever. Now, let me cross multiply this way. The three, three times two X and three times 17. So it's going to give me six X minus 51 equals one times nine, which is just nine. My minus 51, let me move it over as a plus 51. So that gives me that 6x equals 60. Divide by 6, x equals 10. Let me zoom out. If you have any questions, you can just email me. You know where to find me. You can just email me. Good luck.